So we are all settled in to our hostel campsite that backs right up to this pretty thick jungle area. Down below, you cannot see it, but down in that valley, there is a river. Now, one thing that is supposed to be really cool about this hostel or hotel is that sometimes the monkeys come literally right here where I'm standing. So I have decided to work outside at the restaurant table sitting area where I can keep an eye out for a possible monkey sighting. Today is a work day though. We both committed to getting a video edited for you guys before we start to play. But maybe if we get lucky, I'll be able to mix a little bit of fun with a little bit of work. So far, no monkey sightings. All right guys, so I'm sitting here literally editing videos when the monkeys appeared. We have a monkey sighting. There they are. Oh my, they're so stinking cute. Oh, look at them. They're teeny tiny. Oh, I wish I had the big camera. I'll have it later, I promise. They're so cute. Oh my, there's so many of them. They're so tiny and so fast, I don't even know how many there are. Oh, there's another one. That is a different kind. Look at that one, guys. He's all brown. Oh my, there's two different kinds. Oh, I hope I got the little one that was different. Good job. Woo! That one's in the puppy. Lo siento, mi español es malo. Oh, oh, they're everywhere. 
Anyway, alright. I gotta try to go get Kurt. Alright, I walked to the van to get Kurt. Hopefully they're still here. Uh, I told him to hurry. I'm not waiting on him. I'm going back. Oh, they're still here. That's great. I hope he hurries. There must be 40 of the little tiny ones with the white face. But then there was one that was different. Dark brown. Cute as can be. He was with the pack, but he was definitely the only of his kind. I can't believe that the monkeys came this close from the jungle while I'm sitting here editing. editing and I look over on this ladder and I was wondering why they put seeds and fruit on the top of this ladder and look at this and a pretty blue McCall good morning everyone things have definitely taken a turn and before I tell you all about that I want to make sure I show you guys this place because it's been really nice to us but our van is parked here there's a little sort of branch, a satellite restaurant, if you will, out here. They do part of the cooking out here. You can see there's a little bar area, seating area, which is real nice, close to the van. The place is like a uh, sort of a tourist hostel. And I say a tourist hostel, I guess all hostels are for tourists, but this one seems to specialize sort of in big tourist bus that come down from Bogota. And this area down here in Putumayo has a lot of things to offer uh, in nature. They have uh, some great hikes, cascadas, birds, monkeys, jungles, and they also have the indigenous people. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a nice area, but you can see there's a huge restaurant here and what makes this place nice is when they bring the big tour buses down from Bogota they have nice big seating areas the other part of the kitchen is back there and they make really good food here Snow and I have eaten there several nights and it's been really really tasty but and the people have been here very nice and you can see out here there's all these sort of cabanas there's three or four there's some rooms up there so there's accommodations for all different kinds there's bathrooms here so there's toilets washroom and then there's also cold showers and the water is pretty cold and this is the area kind of where the monkeys come and play which is really nice and then back down below us back here is a raging river. Now unfortunately we're not going to have time to show you all this area because of our 
sort of mini disaster and we got to get on the road but I definitely wanted to make sure that I showed you this place so that is about where the good stuff ended other than this was a really convenient and nice campsite but once the monkeys came we were editing and then the next day the rains came rain 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 and this place has really cool waterfalls and stuff that we wanted to see but you know we're on a time limit so we can't stay long but last night when we were getting ready to go to sleep something went horribly wrong with our electrical system in our van uh, after doing a lot of troubleshooting this morning using the Wi-Fi here because there's no cell service out here we have determined we think that our inverter has gone bad and we are deep, deep in Southern Colombia. So we need to drive to a city and hope that we can find a solar store that has an inverter that will help us. The problem for us, our inverter is a 3000, which is a little bit big. Now, we have a few choices. We can drive three days around through the mountains and stuff on some roads that are a bit normal for Columbia. Or we can drive three hours straight across the mountain range on a road that is called the Trampoline Road, also known as the Death Road. So what was supposed to be a fun jungle adventure for you guys has now turned into a very scary drive across the highest peaks of the Andes mountain range. First, we need fuel and water in the van, and then we're headed that way. So what happens with all this rain on the mountainside, whatever's not watershed, meaning whatever doesn't run down the mountain on the outside and rivers and streams and creeks, saturates into the ground. And if you can imagine all the surface area the mountains has, all that water just soaks in and creates tremendous amount of hydraulic pressure, which pushes, pushes the mountain out and you can literally just see water trickling or just coming out of the soil of the side of the mountain so many places we've showed you before. But that is what causes all these landslides, which is another reason why there's a lot of construction along here. But right now we're stuck in this little roadblock right here and the reason is is because they've had a lot of washouts along this way and it's been caused by all this rain and that hydraulic pressure which again causes these mudslides or these big erosion spots so this is the town of Makoa it's a small little city in the departmente of Puto Mayo departmentos are like states this is where we hope to find a bank where we can pull some money out we're low on cash we need to find some drinking water out of water we are completely out of water so we need some potable water we just filled the van up with diesel and we need a few groceries now this grocery trip will be different than others because right now our Electronic system doesn't work, so we cannot cook. So we need sandwich stuff. <laughs> right, Kurt? Yeah. I'm going to have some creative sandwiches until we get to the next city, the bigger city, where we hope we can find the parts we need to fix our solar electrical system. All right, guys. The scary part of our day is getting ready to start. We are leaving Makoa. We have 80 kilometers to go till we get to the next town. You can see here this map of the very curvy road we're about to take over the Andes. Somewhere up here it's going to turn to gravel. And from what we understand it gets very, very narrow. What do they call this? Trampoline? The Trampoline de Muerto. The death road. It's the death road. Um, but People drive it every single day, including big delivery trucks and buses and little cars and motos. The, the really scary part would be is if the heavy rains come and, and cause some of the road to wash away. But it's, um, it's either that or a literally a four day, very long drive around. So it's three and a half hours versus four days and this nice 
juggly street performer is doing his best to calm my nerves <laughs> before we hit the road. So we're going to give him a little tip because Kurt knows anything to help me calm down before this road, right, Kurt? You! Bueno. Sí. All right, we, uh, yeah. Here we go. All right, Kurt, you check this out on your uh, hike map a little bit. What's our highest altitude we're going to have to drive over up here? Oh, uh, I think we have right off the bat, so we're down at about a thousand feet. I think right off the bat, we have to climb to about five to seven thousand feet. And so it's going to be a windy climb. And then once we get up top, then we're on the windy, windy, windy roads. So it's going to be about a three hour drive on the death road. We have a total of about five hours. But We'll see, cooler heads prevail in situations like this. You just take it easy. If it looks too sketchy, turn around and go back. Nothing's worth risking our lives. But it's really important that we make it through this just based on we need new equipment for the van and we gotta get to Ecuador. So hopefully we won't have to turn around. Van is on the dash, it's moving day. And we've kind of already told you guys that. But I don't think Vanna knows what's coming up here, so it'll be interesting to see how long she stays on this. I think it's going to be a gravel, chattery, bouncy road. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like crazy big rocks and bumps like you've seen us go over before. But nonetheless, probably an uncomfortable drive. So we're kind of winding around up right now. It's still on asphalt road. But we'll let you know when we get to the gravelly, rough parts. The worst thing is, it's raining. Oh no, anxiety creeps up on me. Is this how it's supposed to feel? Tell me when it's over, I got someplace that I gotta be. It won't leave. My friends, hey, get out of your comfort zone. It's a blessing in disguise. Get out of what you call home, your name is written in the sky It might feel just like you're on your own But baby, it's another lie, remember you were me I try to work, 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 but it doesn't work I try to say something, but there's a word I try to just pavement has ended. We are now on a gravel road, but so far we have been on much, much worse. But it just started and the views are already breathtaking. I've heard this is one of the most beautiful drives in the world. And as we look out here, I can understand why. Look at that, guys. So it begins. Wow. Yeah, wow, and then the road goes away. <laughs> so. so far, not so bad. I mean, you definitely have to pay attention and be aware of washouts on the side of the road, but I still have a feeling it's gonna get much worse. But who knows? We major shall see. Windy, very, very windy. It's got the title for the windiest road after this. Well, and a big problem would be when you come up on, a, on another vehicle. So we're sure that's gonna happen so far. It's been in very convenient places, but uh, it is beautiful. Everybody was right. It's stunning. I don't want to get too hopeful. 
but we see blue skies and a little bit of sunshine. It looks like it's built to drive across. I guess, because we did. <laughs> Drove across the river. All right, it's getting a little more interesting, guys. A few more narrow spots, some washouts on the roads. A buzzard to clean our carcass. <laughs> it's definitely getting narrow through here. This is where you would not want to come up on another big vehicle. Yeah, this would require backing up. All right, guys, there's a big mountain in front of us and we can see semi-trucks, about four or five switchbacks up there coming on down. So, yes, we have just started this. There's caution tape. I can see straight down below. Wow, this is pretty intense. Oh, this is pretty intense, guys. There's some serious drop-offs here. It just definitely got real. We just came right around this curve, straight on with a big delivery truck. We had to back up. It was very hectic. The dash cam wasn't on. Kurt did a great job. Uh, and it worked out okay. And now we have our third river crossing. I know, these are so cool. We got a big semi car, big truck coming down the road right here, squeezing through the lane. He definitely is a tight fit for this road. But we just passed another Mercedes van set up for transport, but it was the same size and model of ours. It was a dually. And uh, just chatted with them along the way, and they were like, hey, you want to trade? <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, what a beautiful view, but we're about to lose visibility here in the clouds. Yeah, it's either fog or clouds we're coming into. So I'm glad we've showed you what we could so far, because y'all can see the fog is settling in. We'll see how long it lasts. fly the drone and give you a bird's eye view of this road but the drone batteries are dead and we can't charge them because our electrical system is broken this is part of the reason we have to take this road instead of going all the way around but so far there's been a few very narrow and steep places but it's beautiful so that's why you're not getting drone shots. I just wanted to pop in and let you guys know this would be an epic drone flight.
Now they tell us there's a dangerous curve. Yeah. It's cooler up here. <laughs> yes, it is. So far, guys, on this road, we're about an hour in. We have crossed seven river crossings where there are waterfalls coming down the mountain. Uh, we've passed several semis. So far, we've only had to back up one time. We've been lucky and been able to kind of maneuver around them. And there's all these cool rock walls we're driving next to. They're really pretty, but they kind of get close to the van. And we've passed several, several uh, shrines, um, candles lit, crosses, whatever religion it is. They're definitely monuments where they've either lost someone or they pray for the souls that have died on this road. Because there have been many, many, many deaths on this road. But I think as long as you're driving slow and paying good attention, so far, we feel, we feel okay. But we're only an hour in. <laughs> Let's get back to it. So we did the first part was steep. And we're definitely up in the clouds and in the fog, fog now. So in addition to everything else, now we've got visibility issues. Up here, in the middle of this drive, on the top of these mountains, is an empanada store. So we stopped for an empanada and a soda and to do the mandatory stretching of my knee. But we got to do it quick. We got to get back on the road. This fog is terrible, guys. You saw some of those spots we were driving through we literally cannot see. And we've passed a few cars in some pretty sketchy places. So, this road's the real deal. Don't you think, Curdy? Oh, yeah. It's definitely the real deal. All right, let's get back to it. About two hours, and I've kind of learned something, made an observation. The Collectivos, or the public transportation, they come in these little flat vans, and they whiz through here. But they do not back up. So whenever you get to a situation, they just sit there. I mean, they drive it every day. But we were just in a situation. I don't think we videoed it. But there was no way we were going to back up. Finally, we worked it out. But there was just a couple inches between vehicles left on the road. But these guys do not give any ground on this road. It's absolutely they're, they're crazy. They're bullies. They're yeah. bullies. Yeah. They're bullies. When it's easy for them to do a 20 foot backup they just won't do it yeah and we can't on these curvy roads in some situations we have when we could but yeah. that situation we couldn't yeah. we couldn't back up but we're working it out we're getting through it it feels like we're on a downhill turn right now so i think we've made it to the top and are coming back down the other side there's actually a real bridge here instead of making us go across the river <laughs> so we'll see oh. Fingers crossed we made it through the worst part. I've said this before, but I will say it again. When we get to the asphalt road, I'm going to get out and I'm going to kiss the ground. <laughs> and before, I've never done it, but I might really do it this time. <laughs> the rain has picked up quite a bit. Uh, the road's starting to have some puddles. There's some tight areas, so we, we have, have to... On your side. Yes, you have plenty of room over here. Um... Yeah, it's uh, definitely raining harder, and we don't have internet, so we don't know how much longer we have to get till we get off this road. So, Kurt is doing a great job of concentrating. I'm doing my best to not stress out, which I think I'm doing pretty good. What do you think, Kurt? I think she's doing amazing. She's had some pretty stressful rides, and this is right up there with him. She's handling it like a champ. So, but the sooner we can get out of here, the better. This rain takes it up a notch, guys. All right, this guy is backing up. 
He's definitely a better backer than we are. He's done this many times. We also have a semi behind us, which makes all of this even more interesting. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm sure glad he was a good backer upper. Woo! We would have had to back up downhill in the rain, brake sliding to past that bridge curve, to a <laughs> narrow bridge. We did not have an easy route. Unfortunately, he backed up like a champ. Yeah. We think, and we could be wrong, but we think we may be getting close to the end because we have dropped down in elevation. We're back down where it's a little bit more jungly. It is raining pretty hard, guys. Cross your fingers that we're close because now we also have to start worrying about getting caught in the dark. The Google was wrong. It's taken us probably twice as long as she said it would. But hopefully around one of these curves will be the end. The rain has started to let up a little bit. I feel like we're passing a lot of traffic. The road maybe feels like it's in a little bit better shape. You think we're getting close? Well, I think we're definitely getting closer. <laughs> we're getting close. Yeah. We've been going downhill for a long time. The road, I would say, is still just as sketchy as it is, but it's definitely a little bit wider, so... Uh, yeah. And it's still beautiful. All right, I just caught a glimpse of the valley. It was beautiful. The sun was kind of hitting off the really green grass. I could see down into our destination. I could not see the town of San Francisco, which I think is where we're going to stay for the night, which also marks sort of the end of this death road. It's been really stunning and amazing. A little bit more to go, but well worth it. Saved a lot of time, and we made it through. It's almost time for snow to kiss the asphalt. All right, it looks like we finally made it to the asphalt, and snow is going to hold good on her promise. She is going to kiss the asphalt. It's been a stressful one for her. Here she goes. Oh, she's doing a little jig. <laughs> there you go, guys. A little snow jig. We made it. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.